Sanchi, the President of the Republic, Mr. Adam Abaro, the Vice President of the Republic, the former Vice President, Sia President, the leaders of the political parties, and other participants from the respective political parties, the chairperson or chairman IEC and delegation, the media, all other invited guests, the cabinet ministers. I want to take this opportunity to commend the president for the initiation to have this national dialogue. Having taken that personally, I feel very much honored to be given the task by my leader to represent the party in this very important task. It appears it's a replica history in the making. In the 2016 coalition dialogue, I was honored the team's tax by our UDP flag bearer, who is now the current sitting president, to represent him in that dialogue, leading to the signing of the coalition agreement. When many thought that dialogue, the process was a futile exercise, I had the belief then it would be possible. Indeed, it was possible. If I had been honored to be participating in another important dialogue of that nature, I believe my personality and representation in that, and now in this, I am saying it is going to be possible. <laughs> Honorable, uh, I'm sorry, Your Excellency, and the Vice President, this dialogue, as earlier on, alluded by the moderator, people ask why now? And he asks, why not now? Then I add, it's better late than never. The moderator rightly alluded, facing with the current realities, both national and sub-regional, there is a need for this dialogue. And really, that is the situation. If we should say, why now? It could not have a better time, come at a better time than now. We are aiming to have the Gambia that we can all learn and live proudly as Gambians. This was the anticipation in 2016. We are still yearning and standing by that to see that dream we had in 2016 is realized. Your Excellency, to have peaceful country that key stockholders, the politicians, our religious leaders, of course, in general, the citizenry are very important. In this process, all efforts must be done to ensure all are represented. I understand today is the launching where we are reflecting on the team. And also we'll have another day where we'll have broad participation, about 500 members. I would say we should not limit to that. We should go beyond that. Let it be a form of national consultation. 
When we have the National Preparatory Committee, I will not know whether the institution that represents the political parties is part of this committee. If not, it can be included. Then we tax this committee to do total national consultation, region by region. We should not limit to only the gathering that we have on the 16. You should go beyond that so that all voices and all concerns are heard. Your Excellency, our cultural norms and values, the Gambia, we are always promoted that we are among the best in terms of culture and values. Upholding this, that should be an utmost concern. Many a time, it is our young folks, and I believe the way things are going, we need to put our cultural norms and values to the knowledge of our young people. Andre, uh, Your Excellency, if you go to our communities, usually we tend to get disputes here and there as a result of land management. We have in place what is called land commission. I'm not sure whether the land commission is functioning. If not, or if so, it is not as expected. If we want to do away with violence in our communities, the issue of the land, the policy around the land should be looked into. Your Excellency, a hungry man is an angry man. Nowadays, people are hungry. And people, if they are hungry, they'll be angry. Food self-sufficiency, how that can be addressed, should be at utmost responsibility and concern. It is not only about management, but also about generation. How do we maximize our products, our, our production base? That is what we can look into when our people are hungry and they become angry to silence them down. <coughs> Your Excellency, Anti-Corruption Act is in place. We should have the political will and commitment in fighting against corruption. The Anti-Corruption Commission should be enforced and should not also come to be like the Land Commission. The sovereignty of the Gambia should not and must not be compromised. There must be discipline in our institutions and as civil servants, we should adhere to disciplinary rules. We should be committed to our work. I welcome the creation of the new ministry. I was thinking that when it comes, that aspect of indiscipline in our civil society will be addressed. But I'm yet to see any meaningful move towards that. And finally, Action speaks louder than voice. We are here with launch for a commitment of what we call national dialogue to have peace and stability in this country. If we do this work, at the end we'll have reports, resolutions. More importantly, the implementation of the outcome of this engagement. Your Excellency, people will say, we have commissions, and the commission will have reports, but implementation of these reports are usually the problem. Will this uh, the dialogue also will not follow the same pattern? 
Political tolerance above everything. You are the sitting president. Those who are unfortunate and their parties, they are the opposition. Our role is to serve as workers. Criticize your programs, your policies. Whether you will see that to be constructive or otherwise, we may defer, but that's our role. Your position is not to be having any ill feeling against anyone, against such criticisms, but to defend your policies and your programs. Don't see any opposition as your enemy, but rather your opponents, but rather the same brothers and sisters. When I say this, I conclude that I did send a political message to my president. And I'm not sure whether he heard that message. If I've been given this opportunity, I want to recollect that message. If you are on state functions, take consideration what appears to be state functions, state issues are addressed. We leave aside the political issues. And I want to recollect that. I feel very troubled when I see my brother making very uncomfortable statements against my father, who is his father. I feel very comfortable. I feel very comfortable if I see my father criticizing and my brother defending his program, I feel very comfortable, but very uncomfortable if it should be the otherwise. I'm appealing the sonly and the fatherly relationship should exist for peaceful coexistence between the two leaderships. I thank you.